Hi there, I'm Justin. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript crew takes a look at the cell phone policy, goes wrestling with Hamped Up, and gets the lowdown with the government shutdown. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome to Tell It Like It Is. This week, we tackled the newly enforced cell phone policy. This policy states that all phones must be off and away during class. We talked to Mr. Lombardi to learn more. What we have found over the last couple of years is that the use of cell phones, um, and especially aspects of the cell phone from social media, has really blossomed um, and becoming much more uh, part of the school culture than we expected. And that teachers were also finding that, that, that the use of the cell phone was um, counterproductive to education, distracting for students, and that having an approach that one room was enforcing it one way or the other wasn't useful or beneficial to the school. So we had our meetings with teachers and administrators and we felt that what we wanted to do was just support our um, policy um, universally across all classrooms to put the same enforcement that it's often put away as our policy says. When it was first introduced, students were less than enthusiastic. They also had more than their fair share of questions. We sat down with a few upperclassmen to see what they had to say. My initial reaction was, ha, that's never going to work. <laughs> that was also mine. I was just thinking, like, this has already been the plan, and I don't think it's going to change actually anything, but, you know. Um, yeah, I think that as high schoolers, we should probably have the maturity to make our own choices with cell phones, um, but I also don't think it's that big of a deal if we have to put them in a cubby or whatever. So. Well, yeah, I think that what's going to happen is, like, People are like going to abide for like a couple weeks and that's going to go right back to the way it was, but that's just my personal opinion. Whether you love it or you hate it, the new cell phone policy is here to stay. Happy Friday! Hi, I'm Lulu. <laughs> I'm Dave. Welcome to Hamstrom. Y'all ready for this? For years, wrestling has often been described as a pillow fight gone wrong, but to athletes is a legitimate sport that requires a large level of commitment. For my first episode back, I decided I'd interview handsome senior Noah Brink and sophomore Josh R. about the pros and cons of being on the wrestling team. So I'm here with Noah Brink and Josh Reinhardt. How are you guys doing today? I'm good. How are you? How's it going, Josh? I'm doing pretty good. And um, we're just going to get right into it. You know, a big aspect of wrestling is controlling what you eat so you can maintain a certain weight for the meat day. So, um, no, let's just say you're going out to eat with a lady friend of yours. Maybe you want to get a slice of pizza. Are you going to have to micromanage what you're going to be eating that day? Yeah, it kind of depends on the, what day of the week. If it's like a Friday, I'm probably just not going to eat any, eat pizza at least. And um, really, it's more about fluids for me because water kind of weighs more than pizza because – and. Our body's like mostly water, so it's a lot easier to lose weight that way than by just not eating. And how about you, Josh? Do you find yourself um, managing your weight a little bit more than you would in the off season? Uh, yeah, you know, you just gotta like watch everything you eat because you always in the back of your head you're thinking, "Am I gonna make weight the next day?" So you really just gotta watch what you're eating. Now, Josh, I know you've been injured for a decent part of your wrestling career at the high school. You want to take me through a few of those injuries? Uh, sure. Last year, I broke my collarbone uh, two or three weeks before Western Mass. Ouch. Yeah, it was it was rough. Um, that was rough because it was it was like freshman year, and having it stop was like experience that I didn't I wasn't able to get, and it was it was just a halt. It was rough. And this year, I've heard that you uh, are concussed. Yes, I'm concussed. Sorry to hear that, Josh. Would you guys just want to fill in the blank real quick? Yes. I want it, so I'm gonna go get it. Um, and would you say you've used that piece of lyric uh, throughout the whole season for your success? Um, I guess my version of uh, going and getting it <laughs> is pushing the pace in my matches and shooting a lot and trying to score as much points as possible. So that, like, in championship matches, I've been really gassed because of that. But, like, with that in the back of my head, I, that kind of, like, motivates me to keep going and keep pushing to get the victory. And, Josh, when you're on the mats and you're not injured, what motivates you? Uh, just winning because, you know, as you get farther into your career, it's just winning is the only thing that matters. So you want to get that started as early as possible. All right. Thank you guys for being on the show.
The wrestling team is trying their best this year with a record of 3-8-2. Pop out to Southwick High School Saturday at 10 a.m. to see some unitards in action. The theme is retro. Thanks for watching. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. The average Venezuelan has lost 24 pounds this year. Wow. In other news, December 22nd of last year, President Trump declared a government shutdown at midnight. This was in response to a divided Congress that was unwilling to provide Trump with funds to build a wall on the U.S.-Mexico border. Trump stated that he would not conclude the shutdown until he received funds for his wall, but the democratically controlled House of Representatives have stated that they will not include such an expense in the budget. During a speech from the Oval Office earlier this month, Trump threatened to keep the government shut down for months or even years. Over 800,000 federal employees have been affected by the shutdown, approximately half working without pay and half being furloughed, meaning that they are not working at all. We wanted to understand the severity and implications of the shutdown, so we sat down with an expert. The budget has to be passed every year. Um, Congress passes the budget, uh, but Congress just passes the, the amount of spending. Uh, the president uh, actually gets to spend the money. And so a conflict came about how much money to give to the president because the president wants to use it on a border wall. Um, and Nancy Pelosi, the new Speaker of the House, and the Democratic Party saw this as a time to kind of draw a line in the sand, if you will. Um, and, and so the budget wasn't passed to keep money going to a border wall. Uh, Trump wouldn't approve a budget without a border wall. And so the two sides came to an impasse. And the issue of immigration uh, got mixed into the issue of funding the U.S. government. And so and, and, and it, it became a, a political stalemate over who would, who would kind of break first. Thousands of people lost their jobs. Uh, over kind of the issue of immigration, which didn't come to head in a political election year, so it came to head over the budget. The budget isn't controlled by either party. Uh, Congress has to approve spending. They have to approve uh, everything to do with money. Um, but the president gets to spend it. Um, and so the two sides actually do have to work together here. In a way, it's, it's a little like an allowance. And so you can't spend an allowance until you have it. So it's like an allowance in, in check format. And so once you get a check, you can't spend on anything. You can only spend the check on, on what you're given the check for. And so Trump wants part of the budget to be moved to the border wall. But Congress has to OK that. So Congress can't just write any budget they want because the president won't spend it. But the president can't just take the money he's given and spend it on anything he wants. And so this is where it's kind of brilliant because it really controls spending very specifically, and hopefully that's a check and a balance. Uh, in times like this, and we've had a couple of these shutdowns in the last decade or so, it can become political infighting when Congress and the president are so decidedly against each other on, on policies, and, and immigration was this year's policy. We wanted to understand this shutdown as it affects the people, so we sat down with a furloughed federal employee. The government shutdown was a huge negative impact on my life. Um, because of the amount of money that I had to pay out of my savings, I'm going to have to skip a semester at college. On top of that, uh, I've had to leave my job. So I'm, as of the 11th, I'll no longer be tra contracting for the government. That's the top change because I love the folks I work with, but if you can't trust you're going to get a paycheck, it's really kind of a hard life story to stay there. So I had to collect unemployment and uh, legally in mass, you collect unemployment, you have to do uh, job. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all at the Smith College Indoor Track for Senior Night tonight. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye! Thanks for watching. NHS Technology has launched a new site, devilsadvocate.news. Go check it out. Also, remember, the NHS fencing team is always looking for new members. If you're interested at all, regardless of experience, feel free to reach out to myself or any member of the fencing team.